Good morning and welcome to Bible Studies for Life, Session 6. Our topic today is Accept. In a selfishly perfect world, everyone would agree with me. Everyone would enjoy the same things I do, listen to the same music I listen to, discipline their kids like I do. Everyone would vote for the candidates I endorse, and everyone would spend their time and money like I spend mine. What a wonderful world that would be if everyone would just get with the program and if everyone started reading from the same script which just so happens to be the one in my hand. But the reality is we don't always see eye to eye. The question for each of us is what do we do when we disagree with someone? Think about it for just a minute. What do I do when I have, an, a, dis, when I have a disagreement with someone else? Many of us spend an enormous amount of time and we invest a lot of time trying to convince others to subscribe to our point of view. But what if that approach doesn't work? What happens when you talk until you're blue in the face and the other person still stands his or her ground? Is the relationship over? Do we throw our hands up in the air and give up? Or do we walk away and find another friend? You know, we live in a disposable world today. And generally speaking, people do what they want to do. So that's not necessarily what they should do or what we ought to do, but in a lot of times, in a lot of cases, that's what happens. Uh, people will just move on to the next relationship and go ahead and, and, and build new relationships and forget about the ones where they've had difficulties or problems. So true or false, our relationships are more important than our preferences or opinions. Abraham Lincoln made famous this quote from poet John Lydgate, you can please some of the people all of the time. You can please all of the people some of the time, but you can't please all people all of the time. We show our love for Christ by loving others more than we love our own preferences or opinions. In other words, humble selflessness. We studied that last week in our lesson on yield. Our lessons the last couple weeks focused on serving others by approaching them in love, restoring others with a gentle spirit, serving others faithfully as we serve ourselves, helping carry one another's burdens, and humbly placing the needs of others before ours by adopting the same attitude as that of Jesus Christ. Do we honor Jesus' words found in Mark chapter 12, verses 30-31, through 31, where Jesus says, and in my King James Study Bible, Jesus' words are in red, so we should pay very close attention to these words. He says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There's none greater commandments than these. Very important words from our Lord and Savior. I want you to think about these statements for a minute. And I want you to imagine that you're in your living room or in your kitchen, and you've got a, a piece of tape uh, on the floor in the middle of the room. And so when I ask these questions, I want you to take a step to the left if you agree, or take a step to the right if you disagree, and then we'll see where we kind of end up when this exercise ends. So the first statement I want you to think about, accepting another person means I should approve of their actions. So if you agree with that statement, you would make a step to the left, or if you disagree, you would take a step to the right. Again, that first statement, accepting another person means I should approve of their actions. Next one, people who see things as only black or white don't really understand grace. Next statement, some activities I enjoy or participate in hurt my Christian testimony around non-Christians. Next statement, if the Bible doesn't address a specific issue, then it's okay for believers to participate or determine what's right. These are pretty tough questions. I had to put a lot of thought in this as I was going through these myself studying this week. The next statement, if what I'm doing causes another person to struggle in their faith, then I need to refrain from that action. Would you agree or disagree with that? Next statement. I don't know if I would make the same choice or decision someone else has unless I find myself in the same situation. In other words, when you walk a mile in somebody else's shoes, we might be surprised by the decisions or choices that we would make. And then our last statement to consider. Whenever I think about the needs of others, 
I make self-adjustments that demonstrate maturity and selfless, selfless humility. Again, whenever I consider the conscience and needs of others, I make self-adjustments that demonstrate maturity and selfless humility. So the point of our lesson today is, don't let differences of opinion damage your relationships. And our scripture passage today is found in Romans chapter 14 verses 1 through 4 and verses 13 through 19. Let's open our lesson in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to study your word. Thank you for teaching us how to deal with messy and challenging relationships. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who makes our acceptance of one another possible. Grant us wisdom to accept differences of opinion while holding fast to the truths of your word. Help us trust you in all things and lean not to our own understanding. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the setting of our lesson today, this, this letter, this epistle of Romans was written by Paul from Corinth during his third missionary journey. And many Bible scholars agree that this the most, it's one of the most complete collections of Christian doctrine in the New Testament found in one place. The church at Rome was composed of both Jewish and Gentile believers and had very little central organization or local church government at that time. So small groups were meeting all over the city, and so this is probably the reason that the letter, the epistle is not addressed to the church at Rome, but it's addressed to the saints as described in chapter 1, verse 7 of Romans. Romans was penned several years after the emperor Claudius had expelled Jews from Rome. The Jews and Gentiles had obviously developed distinct cultural ways of expressing their faith in Jesus, and the Jews had their traditions, religious laws, and thoughts about what the Gentiles needed to do to be fully Christian. These differences led to tensions within the church and threatened the unity of the body of Christ. When Paul wrote this letter to the Romans, he used a portion of this letter to address issues related to some of those differences. Paul taught them and teaches us to remain humble when we have differences of, of opinion or differences in preferences. Clearly some battles are worth fighting. And there are times when we need to stand firm. And there are times when we need to be silent. Paul helped the Romans and now us to see where to draw those lines. Paul's instructions help guide us to strong relationships in spite of any difference in opinion that we might experience. Let's take a look at our scripture in Romans chapter 14 verses 1 through 4. Except anyone who is weak in faith, but don't argue about disputed matters. One person believes he may eat anything, while one who is weak eats only vegetables. One who eats must not look down on one who does not eat, and one who does not eat must not judge one who does, because God has accepted him. Who are you to judge one another's household servant? Before his, before his own Lord he stands or falls, and he will stand because the Lord is able to make him stand. In our lesson last week, Paul emphasized to the Philippians the importance of living in harmony, having the same love, being united in spirit, being intent on one purpose without selfish ambition or conceit. And here again today in Romans chapter 14, Paul also addresses the importance of peaceful relationships. Rival groups were popping up in the church in Rome because members were joining forces according to their personal persuasions and preferences. Today, we might refer to such like-minded groups as cliques. These believers in Rome became critical of one another for holding different views. And too often we see that in our churches today. This division was wrong and out of place then, and it's wrong and out of place in our churches today. They were not debating the gospel or dividing over whether Jesus had truly died for their sins. They weren't debating the most effective ways to reach their community for Christ. Instead, they were arguing over disputed matters or gray areas such as foods and festivals. Can you think of any gray areas that cause division in our society and churches today? There are way too many to count. And those are in addition to the divisions that already exist in the body of Christ over the interpretation or misinterpretation of Scripture. I want to take a look at this phrase that Paul uses, disputed matters, in verse 1. 
Paul refers to, to this in, in the context that it's, it's underlying doctrines and, and practices that more than anything reflected the church members of that day, their diverse backgrounds and the traditions before they became followers of Christ. And I'm sure that even us today, there are things and, and habits that, that we may have had before we became Christians, and, and maybe there are things that we do now that some other people would question in our lives. Some pastors and theologians refer to these disputed matters that Paul termed as gray areas. Paul uses the example of someone who eats anything with comparison to someone that's a vegetarian. It's likely that Jewish converts still observed all the feasts and they had strict dietary guidelines that differed from the Gentile lifestyle. Paul challenged the Roman believers to accept anyone who is a person of faith, no matter how weak or strong or how young or old in their faith. In verses 2 through 3, Paul goes on to describe this disputable issue or this disputed matter. In Judaism, they made distinction, distinctions between clean and unclean foods. So what should Christians believe about this matter today? Paul affirmed that spiritually mature Christians believed that they could eat anything, that is, any and all of God's bounty, including meat. And this was examined in Acts chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Other believers had different perspectives and different thoughts concerning some foods or food groups, and they chose only to eat vegetables. But regardless of one's position on their diet, Paul urged the Romans who eat not to look down on one who doesn't. And someone who does not eat must not judge one who does because God has accepted him. And so I think this is a very key point in our lesson today. And this is something that I want you to take away if you don't remember anything else. If one is accepted of God, shouldn't we also try to love them? In John 3, 16, he tells us God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. And I thank God today that I'm one of those whosoevers. I'm thankful that I've accepted Christ as my personal Savior, and I'm thankful that God loves me and that I'm justified because of my faith through Jesus Christ. And so when one is, is accepted of God, we need to be very careful how we approach or how we work together. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 11, Jesus addresses the topic of judgment very plainly. In his words in verses 1 through 2, this is what Jesus says. He says, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, you shall also be judged. And with what measure you meet, or what measure that you measure out, it shall be measured to you again. That you be not judged refers to the ultimate judgment of God rather than our way or what seems right to us. In other words, we are not to re render a verdict based on prejudiced information, nor are we to use ourselves as a standard of judgment. We need to leave that up to our Heavenly Father. Acceptance means when Acceptance means we can accept a person whose opinions or preference differ from ours. And it's easy to say, but sometimes that's difficult to do. And in these next verses, we see that acceptance also means we should do nothing to cause the other person to stumble. And so the writer in our lesson had, had written down a couple questions, and one that I, I noted here, what unintended damage can occur when we judge one another? Okay, What can happen in a relationship when we make false assumptions? Or we make decisions about someone based on misinformation. Or, or maybe sometimes we make premature decisions because uh, we quickly uh, move to uh, a wrong assumption or we quickly move to a position that may be in agreement or disagreement with somebody else. So what unintended damage can occur when we do those things? Let's take a look at our next few verses here in Romans chapter 14, uh, verses 13 through 15. Paul says, Therefore, let us no longer judge one another. Instead, decide never to put a stumbling block or pitfall in the way of your brother or sister. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself. Still, to someone who considers a thing to be unclean, to that one it is unclean. For if your brother or sister is hurt by what you eat, you are no longer walking according to love. 
Do not destroy by what you eat someone for whom Christ died. In other words, out of consideration for others, Christians, especially mature Christians, should remove anything from our lives or refrain from actions that would cause others to feel hurt or wounded. This is something else that's very difficult for us as Christians to do. Paul called on mature Christians to lead the way in building unity in the church by refraining from petty criticism of weaker church members. By referring to us, Paul counted himself among those who understood and appreciated the gospel's liberating power. Paul also understood that salvation in Christ set him free to look out not only for his own interests, but also to look out for the best interest of others. And we also talked about this in last week's lesson, yielding to others, and that scripture was found in Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. We should never destroy or end a relationship over someone's preference to eat an impossible Whopper instead of a Baconator, or avoid someone because they like sushi, collard greens, or stewed okra. Verse 14. I want to be very cautious here, and our, our writer uh, cautions us that we should be careful not to misinterpret what Paul is saying in verse 14. Paul is speaking in the context of food when he wrote, Nothing is unclean in itself. This teaching should never be extended to include activities the New Testament describes as immoral or works of the flesh in Romans chapter 13 and Galatians chapter 5. These examples listed in Romans and Galatians are always sinful and should be forbidden, and they are forbidden. Sin is not a matter of personal opinion. Our right attitude should always be to approach folks in love, lend them a helping hand, encourage and lift up others, not tear them down or pile on when others are picking on them or when they're being bullied by our brothers and sisters. And then lastly, as we look at our last few verses, verses 16 through 19, this is what Paul says, Therefore, do not let your good be slandered, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever serves Christ in this way is acceptable to God and receives human approval. So then, let us pursue what promotes peace and what builds up one another. The kingdom of God is about righteousness, a right relationship with God. It's about peace, having honorable relationships not only with God, but with our neighbors and with one another. And then joy, and that joy comes from knowing that our hope fully rests in the power and resurrected life of Jesus Christ through His Holy Spirit. May we promote these things in the lives of our families and our churches and never give up on the hope of healing in our communities. Though we must eat to live, we do not live to eat, although I've known people that they kind of like to eat a lot. But our purpose is to serve the one who paid it all for our salvation. We should live to make the kingdom of God and His glory known. We should be witnesses unto Jesus in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. And that scripture is found in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So what that means, we should be witnesses unto Jesus at home. Okay? We should be witnesses in our surrounding communities and in, a, in the state that we live in. And then it says we should also be witnesses in Samaria. And so in that day, in, in, in Jesus' day, Samaria was a place that the Jewish people avoided. They didn't like the people in Samaria. So we need to be able to go to those places that we don't like to go and be a witness for Jesus. And then to the uttermost parts of the earth. So outside the confines of Blount County, outside the confines confines of the state of Alabama, and outside the borders of our great nation here in the United States, the uttermost parts of the earth. We live to build His kingdom and promote His purpose on earth as in heaven, as we live to see our Savior return in power and glory. That concludes our series on dealing with messy relationships. Let's endeavor to intentionally live out our salvation in Christ by pursuing those things that promote peace and build up others. Please be in prayer for one another that the Holy Spirit will help us to love, encourage, forgive, serve, yield to, and accept others. Join us in the coming weeks as we study living with hope in a broken world. Because Christ lives, we can live unashamed. Our hope rests in Christ alone, 
And knowing that our hope rests fully in Him, we can approach the questions and challenges of life with confidence. God wants us to have so much confidence in Christ that we are not afraid of anything. Our hope in Christ strengthens us to stand strong in a broken world. Until next time, watch and pray. God bless.